Okay, so then you've decided you're going to do something with energy efficiency. So what do you do? Well, the standard starting process is an energy audit. Okay, now these come in myriad shapes and sizes. There is a standard, which is AS3598, um, and I would recommend people talk about level one, level two, level three, and I would recommend that you, you aim at a level two. Now, what does that actually really mean? Unfortunately, the standard, which is actually under review at the moment, um, is probably not as tight as it should be with the result that one person's level two audit is another person's level one audit is another person's level three audit. So it's actually a little bit difficult to work out what, what you should be getting. So from a process point of view, what you want is, as a minimum, a list of specific energy savings measures with costs and benefits an energy end use breakdown, and a description of the site. I suppose the reason why you need those factors, if we go just to the bottom of the slide there, what are the, what are the call signs of a bad audit? Well, the first thing is that, they haven't, is that the auditor hasn't attempted to create a breakdown of the energy consumption. Well, what do I mean by a breakdown of the energy consumption? I mean something even as simple as a pie chart, um, where the pie chart shows this much goes to the fans, and this much goes to the chillers, and this much goes to the lighting. So why is that important? Because if the auditor hasn't got a picture of, of that, then how did they estimate how much energy you're going to save? And the answer is they will have pulled the numbers out of the air. Okay? So it's an, it's an essential quality control measure that says this auditor has actually taken the time to understand your site. Okay? Um, the other bad audit call sign are non-specific measures. My favorite in this area is, uh, do something with your air conditioning controls. That's hopeless. Okay? You actually want something which says, do exactly this with your air conditioning controls. Because otherwise, what they're really saying is, engage somebody else for another 20,000 bucks, to do some more work because, as an auditor, I'm too daft to do it myself, or too lazy. Similarly, um, uh, non-specific measures such as replace all the T8 lamps with T5 replacements is a call sign of a bad audit. Well, it sounds like a specific measure, yeah, but I'm afraid lighting is one of those areas where if you don't design your solution, you get a bad outcome. How many of you have walked into a space and gone, Ugh, the lights in this area look terrible. Okay? And I've seen this in a number of locations. In fact, there was a, a hotel I was at, funnily enough, for an energy efficiency conference. And I was able to stand up and say, okay, so who's walked out into the lobby on level 13 and thought that the lighting is awful? Because somebody had gone in there with a standard one-for-one -one replacement uh, halogen, terribly efficient, terrible lamp, to, to an LED. They'd got the specification all wrong, and now that space looked gloomy, with little spots of light on the floor. Okay? That is not an answer. Okay? Uh, so uh, anything which lacks that level of design is unlikely to be a long-term good outcome for your building. So this comes, all comes back, I have to say, to what I said at the top of the slide, which is you get what you pay for. Okay? If you get a cheap audit, you will tend to get an audit that has less detail and has less underlying um, uh, analysis. With the result that actually the range of audit costs is very wide. Now, it, um, uh, the, I've said here between 3 and 20% of annual energy costs. Now, a lot of that is actually dependent on site size and complexity. A really big site, the percentage gets really small. Uh, a really small site, the percentage gets really big, because to be quite honest, as an energy auditor, just turning up and spending a day on site costs a, 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 an amount of money. Okay? And you know, if that site was this big or this big, I've still spent the money to turn up. Um, but for most sites, you're looking at you know, a number uh, in the 3 to 8% of the annual energy cost uh, as, a, uh, as a sort of ballpark figure. And cheap, as I say, isn't necessarily going to get you a, a good outcome. Um, and I mean, I, I hate to, to reveal my business secrets, but for me, one of the areas that where, where we've lost audits quite often on price, uh, 
we've been able to go, well, you know, that's okay, we'll see them again. And quite often we have, because people come back and say, no, we've done this audit, and we've got this audit that doesn't tell us anything. What do we do now? And the answer is, well, you repeat the audit and actually get useful outcomes. So you, know, you, you get what you pay for. Now, you don't always need to do a full energy audit. And there are a few sites that I've worked on where we, we've never done an energy audit. And again, actually, Freshwater Place is my favorite example in this case. Um, Freshwater Place, large commercial office building taken from two and a half stars to four and a half stars. We never did an energy audit on it. Okay? We just went in there and said, fix this, fix this, fix this, fix this. Okay? Now, there were some other commercial drivers there. They had commitments to achieve four and a half stars, and therefore it wasn't a question of, do or don't we want to make the investment? It was, just get us there. Okay? Um, but there are alternatives to audits. Well, the first is to work internally to identify waste. There are some, uh, there are some challenges with that, because quite often your building staff are the people creating the waste in the first place. So often you need those external eyes to actually identify what's going on. That said, if you've got good staff who are motivated, they can do fantastic things. So you need to think about the skills and motivation of your staff. Um, sometimes you can get quite good results just with a limited domain audit. So you say, well, I'll just get somebody to look at my air conditioning controls. And I have to say, in most buildings, that by itself is worth, is, is a gold mine, okay? Um, and if you're prepared to accept the fact that you're going to get something which says, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, but is then relatively generic in terms of how much you're going to save, and say, well, you're going to get reasonably sized saving off that, uh, rather than a detailed cost-benefit analysis, then that's actually really worthwhile. Similarly, you can get reasonable results out of a, a lighting audit that just deals with lighting. Um, the air conditioning controls reviews, as I say, can be very cost effective because there is so much wrong in most air conditioning controls. Um, you need to be wary of supply, supplier driven equipment upgrades. This is where if somebody comes up and says, oh, I've got one of these, I can sell you. Okay? The problem is, is that you get whatever they're selling, which is not necessarily well adapted to your building. So there are, unfortunately, one or two good examples where this has worked very well, and a lot of examples where you go and say, that was a really dud thing to do. Okay, so I'd be wary of, an, of a, of a supplier-driven equipment upgrade.